Welcome back to the Daily Gold University. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is lesson number five, technical analysis of gold and silver. In 2024, gold crossed what could be a very important turning point in its history. In March of 2024, gold broke out from a 13-year-long cup-and-handle technical pattern by clearing $2,100 an ounce convincingly. Cup-and-handle patterns are among technical analysis's most reliably bullish patterns. Furthermore, multi-decade-long bases, which this pattern in gold was, tend to give way to multi-year and multi-decade rises. The setup is in place for a very exciting gold market over the years and decades ahead. In past lessons, I explained the importance of intermarket analysis for gold and the entire precious metals sector. Gold must outperform the stock market and other asset classes to be in a secular bull market. Although gold has trended higher in recent years and broke out from its cup and handle pattern, it has yet to outperform the stock market in the conventional 60-40 portfolio. Side note, we've seen a major change in the last month. This explains why recent strength has had a different feel to many investors and why the precious metal sector, mining stocks and silver especially, remained in a secular bear market until March of 2024. Capital has yet to move out of conventional assets in favor of gold and precious metals. Side note, that has just started to happen in the past month. As you can see in figure 5.1, while gold has broken out from a 13-year-long cup and handle pattern, it is yet to confirm a new uptrend when measured against the S&P 500 in the total return of the 60-40 portfolio, 60% in stocks, 40% in bonds. However, as the blue arrows indicate, the impending breakout could be only months away. Side note, we had the breakout earlier this month in March of 2025. Let's cover the history and the importance of cup and handle patterns. A cup and handle pattern is a bullish continuation pattern. That means it develops following an uptrend and that uptrend resumes after the pattern is complete. The pattern begins as a market declines in the shape of a U more so than a V. When the market rebounds and reaches its previous peak, the cup is complete. The handle is a small correction that retraces no more than 50% of the rebound, usually around 38%. In terms of time, the handle is brief compared to the time it takes for the cup to develop. The upside targets are triggered when the market breaks out of the pattern and advances to a new high. Measuring the depth of the cup and adding it to the previous high gives the arithmetic target. The rarely mentioned log target is achieved by measuring the percentage move from the bottom of the cup to the previous high, then measuring it forward of the prior high. Technical patterns sometimes fail, but cup and handle patterns are among the most reliable. When the pattern develops as stated and the market trades close to the high during the handle consolidation, the odds of a successful breakout are very high. Hence, it was no surprise that gold was able to break out from its pattern in March of 2024. Cup and handle patterns typically occur in shorter time frames, making perfect comparisons difficult. Nevertheless, we will share some historical examples that can provide context for gold's recent breakout. The best comparison might be the stock market from 1937 to 1950. Figure 5.2 plots the S&P 500 during that time period. The highlighted portion shows the duration of the pattern. The cup lasted nine years while the handle lasted four and retraced slightly more than 38% of the preceding advance. The market reached its arithmetic target in four years and its log target one year later. Although it took some time for the market to hit the upside targets, 1949 to 1957 was one of the strongest and smoothest periods in the stock market's history. Figure 5.3 plots gold at the turn of the century and highlights its unconventional cup and handle pattern from 1996 to 2005. This pattern is technically a saucer bottom pattern because it is not a bullish continuation pattern. That technicality aside, the pattern formed a super bullish handle consolidation in 2004 to 2005 and then exploded higher out of the pattern. Although gold endured significant corrections in 2006 and 2008, it followed the outcome of a cup and handle pattern by gaining roughly 300% in six years. Figure 5.4 plots the Japanese Nikkei index in the 1960s and 1970s. After eight years, a somewhat unconventional cup and extremely tiny handle at the end of 1968, 
the Nikkei exploded to the upside over the next four years. From 1961 to 1969, the market traded between roughly 1,000 and 1,800. Four years after the breakout, the market surged almost 200%, reaching 5,350. Figure 5.5 pl plots Hong Kong, the Hang Seng Index, and highlights 1973 to 1986. The Hang Seng broke out in 1986 from a 13-year base and two potential cup and handle patterns. The price action from 1981 to 1986 is its own cup and handle pattern, but could also be the handle to the cup that formed from 1973 to 1981. The Hang Seng immediately surpassed its arithmetic target, 2900, but did not reach its log target from the 1981 to 1986 cup for another five years due to the post-1987 stock market crash malaise. However, after the breakout in 1986, the Hang Seng gained roughly 575% over the next eight years. From 1973 to 1986, the market could not surpass 1,800. But after it did, it surged to 12,000 over the next eight years. Although not a cup and handle pattern, the stock market, before its historically significant 1982 breakout, shares some similarities to gold and bears mentioning. In figure 5.6, we plot the S&P 500 and gold dating back to 1929 and show the similarities between gold in 2023 and the S&P 500 in the early 1980s before it began its epic secular bull market. The major similarity is the 1974 to 1982 period in the S&P 500 was 2016 to 2024 for gold. Each market put in a major price low at the start of the period and then trended higher for over seven years, but had yet to break away from its secular bear market. Although the stock market trended higher from the mid-1970s to the early 1980s, it underperformed hard assets just as gold trended higher since the end of 2015, but underperformed the stock market. The two markets shared other, though less significant, similarities in the decades following their bubble peaks, the S&P 500 in 1929 and gold in 1980. Following the bubble peaks, gold did not make a new all-time high until 28 years later, 20, 28 years after 1980. And the S&P 500 did not make a new all-time high until 26 years later after 1929. Furthermore, at its 1974 low, 45 years after 1929, the S&P 500 was only 100% higher. Gold was only 30% higher than its 1980 peak 36 years later at the 2016 bottom. In figure 5.7, we highlight gold since 1970 and mark its cup and handle pattern, which occurred from the 2011 peak through the breakout in March of 2024. This cup and handle pattern was stronger than typical because the right side of the cup, having reached, 20, 2000, uh, having reached $2,050 an ounce in August 2020, is higher than the left side, the 2011 peak of $1,920 an ounce. Also, the handle, for other than a few weeks, remained above its 38% retracement in the upper 1600s. As we publish, gold is trading around $2,700 an ounce some seven months after it broke above $2,100 an ounce. The cup and handle pattern arithmetic target or measured upside target is around 3,000 an ounce, while the log target is nearly 4,000 an ounce. Side note, as a recording, the measured upside target of 3,000 has been achieved. It is important to understand that these types of patterns and long bases have tremendously bullish implications beyond just a few years after the breakout. The S&P 500 broke out from its 13 year cup and handle pattern in 1950 and experienced a very strong advance into 1957, which continued into the 1960s. Gold's breakout from its cup and handle pattern bottom formation in 2005 sparked a run that continued for another six years. The Japanese Nikkei's breakout from an eight-year cup surged higher for another four years before the next bear market. After breaking out of a huge 13-year base, Hong Kong's Hang Seng surged 575% over the next eight years. Gold's breakout from its 13-year cup and handle pattern marks the start of a new secular bull market in which gold and precious metals should trend higher for at least another decade. Consider gold's breakout in the context of secular peaks in the stock market and the gold to 60-40 portfolio ratio as shown in figure 5.8. Gold peaked in 2011 and 1980, 
11 years after the secular peak in the S&P 500. Gold stocks peaked in 1937, more than seven years after the stock market peak in 1929. In addition, gold peaked nine years after its impulsive advance against the 60-40 portfolio began at the end of 1971 and 10 years after its impulsive advance began against the 60-40 portfolio in late 2001. The stock market has yet to reach a secular peak, and it remains questionable whether gold has begun an impulsive advance against the 60-40 portfolio. Side note, it has, based on the action earlier this month, March of 2025. Considering history, either case suggests that the secular bull market in gold and precious metals will continue well into the 2030s. As explained in Chapter 4, silver reliably follows strength in gold and leverages moves in gold. Therefore, the incredibly positive outlook for gold is, of course, massively positive for silver. Regarding the technical outlook for silver, we should keep two points in mind. First, silver is set to have the biggest breakout in the modern history of capital markets when it surpasses $50 an ounce. The greatest breakout of all time was that of commodity prices in 1971. See figure 11.6 later in our lessons. That'll be in lesson number 11. Second, silver, like gold, will be unleashed after gold breaks out against the 60-40 portfolio. In figure 5.9, we plot silver against the 60-40 portfolio and gold against the 60-40 portfolio. The blue arrows mark the points where gold began an impulsive breakout move against the 60-40 portfolio, the beginning of both 1972 and 2002. Each point was incredibly close to epic bottoms in the price of silver and silver against the 60-40 portfolio. Silver is in a different position today as it has moved well off its 2022 and 2020 bottoms. However, for continued upside and explosive moves beyond $35 an ounce and $50 an ounce, silver and gold need to outperform the 60-40 portfolio. Figure 5.10 plots the chart of silver. In nominal terms, silver is sporting an incredible and historic multi-decade base that dates back to its 1980 peak, 45 years in the making. This is unparalleled in, modern, in the modern history of capital markets. When silver reaches $50 an ounce, it will be the third test of $50 in half a century. Although silver looks like a gigantic cup and handle pattern, it is technically not because the handle consolidation, 2011 until present, retraced roughly 75% of the advance from $4 an ounce to $50 an ounce. As stated earlier, the handle consolidation retraces only 38% to 50% at the absolute most. Silver's price action since the 2011 peak has been much too weak to characterize it as a handle. However, the huge 45-year base in silver, like a cup and handle pattern, has extremely bullish implications once silver is ready to break above $50 an ounce. Potential measured upside targets of $87 an ounce and $96 an ounce exist. There are no other examples of individual commodities breaking out of bases more than 40 years in the last 50 years. The closest and best comparison would be the breakouts in copper and oil in the 2000s and the ensuing upside as shown in figure 5.11. In 2005, copper broke out from a 32-year-long base. From 1973 to 2005, the metal traded between 50 cents a pound and $1.40 a pound. After its breakout in 2005, Copper surged 170% to a high of $3.92 a pound in only 12 months. In 2004, oil broke out from a 24-year-long base. Oil had traded between $10 and $40 a barrel from 1980 to 2003. Then it broke above $40 per barrel in 2004 and gained nearly 70% in 14 months and 95% in two years. Post-breakout, it ultimately gained 268% over the next four years. Consider silver's current 45-year-long base and the upside potential after it breaks $50 an ounce. Copper surged 170% 12 months after its breakout, while oil gained nearly 70% 12 months after its breakout. Oil's path would put silver above $80 an ounce, while copper's path would put silver well above $100 an ounce 12 months after silver breaks out. Finally, we close this chapter by noting two very important technical similarities between this fledgling secular bull market in gold and silver and the secular bull market of the 1970s. First, unlike in the 1930s and 2000s, 
Both bonds and stocks were in a secular bear market during the 1970s. Bonds are currently in a secular bear market for the first time since 1965 to 1982. After 1968, stocks began their secular bear market, setting the stage for an incredible 1970s in hard assets. Today, stocks are near the end of a secular bull market and will later join bonds in a secular bear market. Second, gold and silver, as they were in the late 1960s and unlike in the 2000s, are in a position to make new all-time highs at the beginning of this secular bull market. In the 2000s, silver never exceeded its 1980 price. Other than sometime in 2008, gold spent only the last two years of that secular bull market at a new all-time high. In, in figure 5.12, we plot gold and silver and mark the breakouts to new all-time highs after many years with blue arrows. Gold's two biggest breakouts were in 1972 and March 2024, which followed a 13-year base. The unsustainable breakout, excuse me, the unsustained breakout in 2008 and sustained breakout in 2009 occurred too late in that secular bull market. For silver, we can mark the breakout in 1967 or 1973. Once the stock market secular bull ends and silver breaks $50 an ounce, th this precious metal secular bull market could mirror that of the 1970s in which the gains dwarfed those in the 2000s. Using daily closing prices, we find that gold surged 2,300% from 1970 to 1980, but gained only 648% from 2001 to 2011. Silver exploded 3,540% from 1971 to 1980, but gained only 1,106% from 2001 to 2011. In inflation-adjusted terms, gold gained 879% in the 1970s to 448% in the 2000s, while silver gained 1,351% in the 1970s to 839% in the 2000s. Chapter Summary In March of 2024, gold broke out of its 13-year-long cup and handle pattern. It has upside targets of roughly $3,000 an ounce and $4,000 an ounce. This is the most significant breakout in gold since the gold standard ended in 1971. The 2005 breakout was also substantial, but did not occur at an all-time high. As the historical examples show, breakouts around an all-time high out of long bases lead to very significant moves for not only a few years, but also in some cases over a decade. The current position of the stock market in gold against the 60-40 portfolio confirms that the cup and handle pattern breakout is the start of a new secular bull market in gold and precious metals. Once gold can outperform the 60-40 portfolio and the stock market peaks, gold's new secular bull market will be confirmed and gold, silver, and the gold stocks will accelerate to the upside. This is one of the most important pieces of information from this book. Side note, as we've already said multiple times in this lesson, we got the breakouts earlier this month. Silver breaking out of a now 45-year-long base past $50 an ounce will mark the biggest breakout in capital markets in, over, in the last 50 years. The moves in copper and oil after they broke out from 32-year-long and 24-year-long bases, respectively, argue that silver could approach $100 an ounce after the first year of its breakout and trade above $100 an ounce after the first few years. Finally, the bond market context and long-term technical setup put gold and silver in a position to move much like the 1970s rather than the 2000s or 1930s. That is the end of Lesson 5. Thank you so much for tuning in. Next up is Lesson number 6, Fundamental Drivers for Gold and Silver in the 2020s and 2030s. Thank you so much for joining me. See you in the next lesson.